Hello again, this is Earl Silverman, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Rheumatology, welcoming you back as I highlight a paper of particular interest to the readership, and I'll interview one of the authors of an article from the May 2022 edition of the journal. The article I picked for more in-depth exposure is entitled Gestational Diabetes Mellitus Risk in Pregnant Women with Systemic Lupus Erythematosus and is by Dr. Jernat and colleagues. And I'm pleased to have Dr. Sophie Jernat who will give an overview of the paper gestational diabetes and the risk of pregnancy in women with systemic lupus on behalf of her colleagues. The paper is currently available at the journal's website at jroom.org for viewing, as well as an accompanying editorial entitled Systemic Lupus Erythematosus Increases the Risk of Gestational Diabetes, Truth or Illusion by doctors Yan Ling, Chan, D, and Wu from the Renji Hospital School of Medicine, Cheyenne, uh, sorry, Shanghai, Jiantong University, Shanghai, China. So I'm pleased to be speaking to Dr. Sophie Jeanette, who is the first author on the paper that examines the issue. Sophie, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak to me and the listeners. So with that, if we can begin. So, First question, the issue of the risk of gestational diabetes in women with SLE is certainly not new. And as you review in your paper, there have been many papers on the subject, including a systemic, systematic review and meta-analysis, which was published in 2019. So please outline why you chose and you felt it was important to revisit this issue. Yes, so uh, first I wanna thank you for this opportunity uh, to give an overview of our paper on gestation diabetes risk associated with lupus. Uh, I would like shortly to highlight also the co-authors, um, Elizabeth Arkema and Elizabeth Svenningsen, who are working at the Kaolinska Institute. Uh, Julia Simard, working at Stanford School of Medicine, and uh, Anna Karen Wikström, working at the Uppsala University. Um, we know that women with lupus have an increased, uh, have a higher risk of insulin resistance, uh, which is an important risk factor for gestational diabetes. Um, and the use of glucocorticoids may increase the risk of gestational diabetes. Uh, so when we looked at the evidence before we conducted the study, uh, we concluded that it was unclear if lupus was associated with a higher risk of gestational diabetes. Uh, the meta-analysis of Dr. Dong uh, in 2000, published in 2000 to, to, uh, 2019 on the association of lupus and gestational diabetes uh, reported a non-significant pooled risk ratio of 1.08, but it showed a significant heterogeneity. Um, and the meta-analysis included only five studies, um, where two had a small sample size, uh, and three had unclear diagnostic criteria of gestational diabetes. And data on medication was largely missing. So uh, we felt like, um, yeah, and the scientific world needed some more evidence for on this topic. So at our clinical epidemiology uh, division of the Karolinska Institute, we have data, access to Swedish registry data uh, to the total of the total Swedish population uh, with lupus. So this is great data to study a relatively rare disease like lupus. And we have data on medication use, yeah. I think we sort of got at the second question that going into, but more in depth on the methodology used in this yeah. study. Um, so for this study, we sampled mothers with and without lupus from the SLIN cohort. And the SLIN cohort is a Swedish registry-based cohort, including all women with lupus from 1987 uh, and five randomly sampled uh, general population controls without lupus. Um, and from this SLIN cohort, we included all singleton pregnancies uh, from mothers with and without lupus between 2006 and 2016. 
um, lupus was the exposure in our study. And it was defined uh, based on ICD coded visits in the National Patient Register and Medical Birth Register. And we used, we defined lupus as at least two ICD coded visits um, in these registers, with at least one visit uh, from a specialist who treats or diagnoses lupus. And this visit with the specialist should have occurred before uh, pregnancy. Um, gestational diabetes was the, was the outcome and was defined as at least one ICD coded visit in the National Patient Register. Um, or the medical birth register. And I think where we are different from other studies that we have seen in uh, published is that we excluded women with pre-gestational diabetes um, as they should not receive a diagnosis of gestational diabetes. So we excluded women with um, a diabetes diagnosis before uh, pregnancy or during the first trimester uh, and women with anti-diabetic medication in the prescribed drug register uh, before pregnancy or prior to the second trimester, um, except if they use medication for a gestation diabetes in a prior pregnancy. Um, and then we conducted the modified Poisson regression model, uh, which estimates risk ratios. And these risk ratios are directly interpretable. Uh, so this is, uh, this is very uh, nice uh, model to use, especially for clinical studies. Uh, the models are adjusted for maternal age at delivery, year of delivery, and obesity as possible confounders. Mm -hmm. um, and then we looked at glucocorticoid and hydroxychloroquine dispensations of prescriptions in the prescribed drug register. And we calculated the cumulative defined daily dose. Um, so the defined daily dose is the average daily dose used by an adult for its primary indication when the drug is prescribed. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. And what were the major findings of your study? Yeah, so we uh, identified 695 pregnancies in women with lupus and 4,644 pregnancies in women uh, from the general population between 2006 and 2016. Uh, the absolute prevalence of gestational diabetes was low. It was 2.6% in women with lupus and 1.4% in women uh, without lupus. Um, and among women with gestational diabetes, uh, women with lupus were older uh, compared to women without lupus. Uh, so women with lupus were, um, um, had a mean age of 35 years and uh, women without lupus, 33 years. And they were more often obese. So 39 patients of women with lupus were obese compared to 33 women without lupus. Um, and when we looked at first deliveries, we did not find an association between gestational diabetes and lupus. Uh, but we, when we looked at all deliveries, we found that women with lupus had a twofold higher risk of gestational diabetes compared to women without lupus. Uh, and then we looked at the occurrence um, of gestational diabetes by uh, exposure to glucocorticoids or hydroxychloroquine. And we found that uh, there was no difference um, in gestational diabetes occurrence. So gestational diabetes occurred among 2.3% among of those uh, with glucocorticoids and hydroxychloroquine and among 2.8% among of those uh, without glucocorticoids and hydroxychloroquine dispensations. Yeah, so the number of events are low. I think that's important to, uh, um, yeah, to mention again. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, one of the points made in your paper was this is the first population-based study. And, you know, using registry data population-based data, there's advantages and disadvantages. And could you please outline some of them? for yeah. the um, readership. So the advantages of this uh, population-based design using registry data is that it limits selection bias um, and all healthcare data is registered prospectively. So women with lupus were identified 
uh, with lupus before the pregnancy, uh, and we used a register-based case definition. Elizabeth Arkema and Julia Simmert uh, published a study um, on this registered-based case definition. Um, they investigated several um, case definitions for lupus using this national registry data in Sweden. And um, yeah, so that's 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 really so that's really good. And the identification of lupus before pregnancy reduces misclassification and selection bias. Um, but there are also some disadvantages. So um, we have data on uh, on medication use, prescribed dispensations of medications, and we collect them from the prescribed drug register. Uh, but this register does not give us information if um, these women adhere, adhere to these medications, so if they actually are taking the medications. And another thing is that we don't have data of, on primary care. Um, and diabetes is mostly diagnosed and cared for in primary care. Uh, so we may have missed some women who um, have diabetes uh, before pregnancy or during the first trimester. Um, for example, those women who um, control the diabetes with lifestyle adjustments. And this may have led to misclassification uh, of undiagnosed diabetes as gestational diabetes. Uh, and this may have happened more among women without uh, lupus from the general population. Um, and if this is the case, this will bias their measure of effect downward. So it would be an underestimation of the effect. Thank you. I mean, the issue always comes up using your mm -hmm. It's very nice. And now my final question is, could you please put the findings of your study in the, the context of the current literature? Yeah, so um, compared to our other studies, the prevalence of gestational diabetes in our study is low. Uh, so it was only 2.6% among women with lupus and 1.4% among women from general population. Other studies have reported prevalence of gestational diabetes up to 28%. Um, it's, though it's very difficult to compare the prevalence of, the, of gestational diabetes between countries because the... Um, Diagnostic criteria of gestational diabetes is very inconsistent between countries. Um, the low prevalence in Sweden uh, is likely uh, the result of strict, strict definition of gestational diabetes. And most parts of Sweden lack a universe, universal screening with an oral glucose tolerance test. So it's more based on risk factors. Um, so this is one and unlike other studies, uh, so we excluded women with pre-gestational diabetes. Um, and this, so maybe other studies may have included these women, so leading to a higher prevalence of, of uh, gestational diabetes. But they are not at risk, so they should actually be excluded. And then if you look um, uh, what is published on the association between gestational diabetes and lupus, um, Don and colleagues published the meta-analysis and systematic review in 2019. And if you look at these studies, they reported very inconsistent results. So one study from Oman uh, by Abdwani and colleagues in 2018, uh, they reported a significant increased risk of uh, gestational diabetes associated with lupus with a risk ratio of 2.7. Um, study population, the, set, the sample was small. Um, the prevalence of gestational diabetes was very high. It was 28% in women with lupus and 10% in women without lupus. So I think they used a less stricter definition of gestational diabetes compared to our study. Um, and a study from China found a significant lower risk of gestational diabetes associated with lupus. Uh, uh, the risk rate showed 0 0.5. And this was a relatively large sample size, um, but the prevalence was lower in women with lupus than it was 6% in women with lupus and 12% in women without lupus. Uh, both of these studies, uh, again, did not exclude women with diabetes uh, before pregnancy or during the first trimester. And both studies had unclear defin um, definition of gestational diabetes. And that was that. I've seen that in more studies, uh, so it's difficult what actually 
um, how these women were diagnosed with, with uh, gestation diabetes and what was the um, uh, criteria for that. Um, and three other studies did not find any significant difference uh, between gestation diabetes risk um, between women with and without lupus. So, yeah, stud um, I think the results are inconsistent between studies. And it's difficult to, uh, as mentioned in the editorial, is it truth or illusion? Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, it just seems like to me that we have to get clear definitions so that we know we're talking about the same thing. And exactly. For everything. And I want to thank you for pointing all that out. Hopefully, we'll be able to do future studies with a consistent definition. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything you think um, we may have missed that you think our listeners should know? Um, I think, um, no, I, I don't think, I think we mentioned, uh, we talked about many things of the study and uh, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. Um, maybe one thing that I just want to argue that it's important to, um, yeah, interpret these studies cautiously, especially those with just so, um, a uh, few outcomes, and we just try to uh, stick with what our data and numbers uh, would allow to investigate. Yeah, thank you. I think there's very important points you mentioned, generally about epidemiological studies, I mean, mm -hmm. consistencies, definitions, and power. I yeah. think that we have to all take all that into consideration, and I want to thank you for pointing that out and really giving some excellent overview and new insights into the risk of gestational diabetes and your study was reassuring. Um, and, you know, as a pedi trained pediatrician, going back to my old days, these things of 10 or 12% of gestational diabetes in general, it just seemed to me ridiculously high by Canadian mm -hmm. standards. So yeah. I wonder about these definitions. Mm -hmm. What you say makes intrinsically more sense to me, but okay. only me. So again, I want to thank you. And to our viewers, please read the full length article entitled Gestational Diabetes Risk in Pregnant Women with Systemic Lupus Erythematosus, as well as its accompanying editorial entitled Systemic Lupus Erythematosus Increases the Risk of gestational diabetes, truth or illusion. Both of these are currently available on the journal's website at jroom.org. And we'd love to hear any comments you have on Twitter at, J, uh, at jroom or by email manuscripts at jroom.com. And I wanna thank you all for joining us and hope you will join next month when I will speak to the author of an article of particular interest from the June 2022 edition of the Journal of Rheumatology. Thank you. Thank you.